We're three days into our first cruise on our new narrowboat, and we have 10 days left to get our boat to our winter mooring as we slowly make our way south from Stoke-on-Trent. Morning. During these first days, I was sleeping really lightly because every noise was unfamiliar and on a boat, there are a lot of noises. So I was waking up really early every day because of the rain on the roof or geese honking or people walking by or the boat creaking. But the mornings were so beautiful that I didn't even mind. It was so nice to be so close to nature as the seasons changed and we could see autumn begin turning into winter. Stoke-on-Trent is said to be the world capital of ceramics. The city is affectionately known as the Potteries and it has a really interesting industrial heritage because of how it's been shaped by the pottery production industry for over 300 years. It's still home to a number of big ceramics brands so a visit to Wedgwood was a must while we're here. This place was enormous and when we went on a Saturday it was practically empty. I was super excited about the factory outlet shop, but I didn't even buy anything because I was completely overwhelmed and there was just too much choice. They had another shop full of loads of handmade crafts from smaller makers, which was really cute. Loads of really nice gifts and locally produced Staffordshire merch. Six Towns is a family-run distillery who make gin and vodka and the bottles are made right here in Stoke-on-Trent and they're in the shape of bottle kilns, which we had just cruised past in the previous video. On certain days you can book a tour of the factory and then they do guided tours of the collections, loads of other events and creative workshops. So I would definitely recommend it if you're in the area. I thought it was a really cool space. But we just went to look around the main collection bit, which is basically a museum. It's massive and it's free to visit. It's now part of the V&A and the collection apparently contains 175,000 works of art, ceramics, photographs and other pieces to tell the story of Josiah Wedgwood. And then also the broader history and the context of ceramics production in this area right up until the present day. Just post them alone. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Probably did. Some of this might say post them alone, we don't know. It's an amazing collection. I really enjoyed having a look at everything. They had some really interesting displays about the process of design and the manufacture of their pieces. There are samples of different experiments and techniques which they pioneered throughout the years. There were displays about the role of the Industrial Revolution and its connection with the development of the canal system, which was of course crucial. There was some really interesting stuff about marketing. Josiah Wedgwood was a real visionary and an innovative retailer. He pioneered loads of sales techniques, which we now think of as just standard, like money back guarantees. And in the 1700s, he started doing free delivery from his London factory. I read somewhere that he is the Steve Jobs of pottery. He once said that his aim was to become vase maker general to the universe, which is goals like that man knew how to set an intention. But yeah, really interesting and highly recommended for a visit. There is also a main Wedgwood shop and there's a tea room where you can have afternoon tea, but we needed to get back to the boat. 
Also, I felt quite anxious to be off the boat. Like the whole time I was away from the boat, I wanted to get back to it. It felt really weird to just have your whole home and your cat parked up somewhere random in a place that you don't even know very well. It feels quite vulnerable, but I think you get used to it. When you're inside the boat, it just feels like home and you don't think about it at all. But when you're away from it, you're like, oh my God, all my stuff's on a boat. I live on a boat, you know? What's, uh, what's the deal here? What are they up to? What are they doing? What are they doing? Oh, why doesn't someone give them some? Should I get a bottle? Yeah. Should I get a bottle of water and give them some? Anyway, it was time for us to move on. I really liked mooring here in Barliston and could easily have spent more time here, but we had to get moving. On this day, our destination was Stone, which is a market town, which the canal passes right through the center of, and that would be our home for the night. This was such a lovely area to cruise through. It was so quiet and the sun came out and it was just beautiful. I had got the hang of the locks, so I was chilling. It was just a really nice, relaxed cruising day. This would be how this day would yeah. progress based how on it started, how, it's going. how it started, how it's going, exactly. That is narrow AF, damn. Welcome to Stone.
we easily found some space to moor at the visitor moorings in stone and walked into town to get some takeaway curries and had a GNT, all of which was a perfect end to a long day of cruising, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. We were planning to continue cruising, but we needed to hit up some shops. Our internet connection situation was really bad. We were tethering from our phones and it just wasn't good enough because we do need to stay connected for work. And the nearest place we could get what we needed was Stafford, which had a three shop. So we went there and I got another litter box for Matilda because she didn't like the first litter box that I'd bought her a couple of days ago. The pet shop had these incredibly posh barber dog toys, can you believe? Oh my God. These are, these are beautiful. And then we went to B&M, which I love. I just love any shop full of tat. It's my favorite thing. How incredibly happy I am to be here. And then I went and bought some socks and pyjamas because we didn't know how to heat the boat properly and the mornings were getting cold. It was just a flying visit to Stafford though. Once we got everything we needed, we were off. No time for sightseeing. Here I am eating a sandwich with a haul of 5G modem, tea and socks. And then we went back to the boat for the night. So with our new 5G modem, our internet was much improved and we could pick up where we left off and continue our journey. We went for a quick look around Stone, which is a charming town with loads of character and very, very good charity shops. And then we set off because we needed to fill up water and get some diesel, so we thought we would tackle our first marina. Because this was our first trip on the boat, we had no idea how far any of our tanks would go, how far things like water and the toilet tank would last us. It was all just very unknown. We do have a water gauge, which we were chuffed with until we realized that it was only showing completely full or completely empty, which is more or less useless. We were just casually having these long, elaborate daily showers, like water was infinite, and then the water suddenly ran out, so we needed to fill it up. People were definitely staring at us because we moored up at the visitor's dock really weirdly. But then we got a hose and filled up the water tank and got diesel. Getting soaking wet. Look, it wasn't helping that they were watching at all. Everything with boat and is then not helping. And as soon as I look up, the thing went out yeah, and it went yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. And then they were like. So mission accomplished, another small milestone first water top up and diesel done. Oh my god, he's going for it. <laughs> we survived our first own diesel, well marina, we entered the marina, we got the diesel, we did the water and now we managed to get out of the marina with the most minimal of bumps to the boat. And only minimal. disgracing ourselves in front of like two people. Yeah. And now, sheep. Hello. And then we were back into the countryside for another long cruise until the end of the day. I wish there was more time to stop and take everything in. But this isn't a leisure cruise, we had somewhere to be, so it was a cruise with purpose. We now have seven days to get to our winter mooring, and we were starting to realise that if we were going to make it, we needed to pick up the pace.
you are.